Hello and welcome to another edition of the Consumer Quarter. I'm Simon Pallon. Today on the show, how much worse for our health could fast food get? And when will the big outlets stop advertising to children? Also, a major newspaper publisher sheds a little more light on how much consumers will be charged to read news online. But first, social networking etiquette. Our parents tried to teach us what's right from wrong in the real world, but now the growth of social networks means consumers have a whole new code of ethics and morals to deal with and understand. It can be confusing too because as the functionality of sites like Facebook and Twitter change, people have few clues what's ethically and socially correct. Well, in the real world, people are starting to talk about online etiquette. One of them is social networking expert Katerina Morianov. I spoke to her earlier and asked her how strong are the ethics codes that exist online. A lot of people will often think about, okay, there's a defined set of rules and re restrictions about what they should and shouldn't do. But when it gets down to it, it's really about the relationship you have with that person and how well you know them. Okay, so let's look at some specific examples here. Let's say a person's friend request is rejected, then those two people meet up in the offline world. There can be some real tension there, can't there? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, again, it depends how important that person's relationship is to them. Um, obviously, if they've decided not to be friending with them, then there's either something going on there or they want to keep their professional life and their personal life separate or that they really want to go, well, actually, you know, I'm not quite sure about that person yet. I'm not sure I want to let them into my inner sanctum. Um, so by actually ignoring their request in that way or just saying, uh, you know, leaving them pending there, they're saying to that person, hey, you're not quite a good enough person to be part of my circle yet. And so there's every right that that person's going to feel rejected. That They're can not... be a big blow, can't it? It can be. It's just like in the real world. You know, if, if someone gets asked out and that other person says no, it's just as much a blow. Um, just because it's a little button online doesn't make it any difference. I heard of a story of a guy in an accounting firm who requested a female colleague to be his friend. She didn't accept and then when she declined, he asked her why face to face. She didn't appreciate that and went and complained to management, which then resulted in the guy receiving an official warning. Uh, is this sort of thing common? Well, I, I haven't heard of that happening before, so I'm not sure of it's how, how widespread it is, but I know that people have definitely told their friends, told other colleagues when someone has requested them. And so in a situation like that, it's really understanding, again, that, that there's real people on the other end of the line. It's got real-world consequences. And that what you do, whether it's just a little tick of a box or whether it's talking to a person offline as well, has consequences that can reach into their life and to really think about that before you act. Okay, so let's say if you're in a chat room and you're chatting to someone and you log out of the chat room without saying goodbye, is that acceptable or are you expected to say goodbye to someone just as you would in the offline world? Well, I mean, it depends on the kind of relationship that you have with that person. If you have an intense conversation and you're one-on-one -on -one for 20 minutes and you're talking about something, then absolutely, if you're just going to walk up and step out, it would be like you're stepping out of a conversation in the middle of the room. However, if it's something that's just been, you know, a couple of minutes here, a couple of minutes there, then you have every right just to leave, totally. I again, understanding that if someone else does that to you, to question what's going on and not instantly taking it as a rejection either and to go, well, hey, you know, they might have had to go answer a phone call or answer the door or they might have had something else more important than you to do. Okay, so are there any other etiquette pitfalls that people have to be wary of when they're on the internet? When you're online, you're interacting with a whole group of people. It's, it's You've got an audience there in front of you and everything you do has the potential to be seen by hundreds, literally thousands of people. So when you're taking those steps to act, it's really remembering that there are other people on the end of the line there and if you're going to you know put status updates there that could potentially be controversial or offend people to understand that if you're going to post photos of other people online and they may not really appreciate that then it's really again thinking about and knowing the other people that are there. Katerina Morianov, thanks for your time.